How I Became a Pirate. This is written by Melinda Long. She's the author. And the pictures are by David Shannon. He is the illustrator. He also illustrates and writes the No David books. And I have permission to read it to you from Scholastic. How I Became a Pirate, title page. Pirates have green teeth, when they have any at all. I know about pirates because one day, when I was at the beach building a sand, cast building a sand castle and minding my own business, a pirate ship sailed into view. I knew what it was because its flag had a skull and crossbones on it and because I could hear the pirate singing, hey, ho, blow the man down. They were a little off key. I tried to tell dad, but he was busy setting up the beach umbrella. I tried to tell mom, but she was busy slathering my baby sister with sunblock. So I went back to my sandcastle, but I kept an eye on the pirates. By then they were ro rowing to shore. They're already in the little dinghy. When they landed, the head pirate climbed out of the boat and yelled, Ahoy, thou mighty! Be this the Spanish main? No, I said. This is North Beach. Shiver me timbers, the pirate said. We must have taken a wrong turn at Bora Bora. He walked around my sandcastle. He looked at the moat, and he yelled back at his crew, He's a digger, he is, and a good one to boot, and a good one to boot, the others agreed. What be your name, matey? the head pirate asked. Jeremy Jacobs, sir, I told him. Well, Jeremy Jacob, he said, you're looking at Braidbeard and his crew. We be needing a digger like yourself. We've a chest of treasure to bury. I treasure, the others shouted. You're coming with us, Braidbeard told me. I didn't think Mom and Dad would mind, as long as I got back in time for soccer practice the next day. That's how I became a pirate. As soon as we were on board, Braidbeard showed me the chest of gold and jewels. Got to find a place, a safe place for this tre here treasure. It's high, it's high time we're off, he announced. We're off, we all shouted, and we set sail. There was plenty to do on board. The pirates taught me to sing sea chanties, the louder the better, and to say real pirate stuff like landlubber and scurvy dog. By the time I, by dinner time, I could speak pirate perfectly. I also learned pirate manners. Braidbeard pounded his fist on the table and yelled, Down the hatch, me laddies! Down the hatch! We all shouted. 
Braid Beard gulped his food down and said, Hand over the meat! The meat! we all roared. Nobody told us to finish our spinach. There wasn't any. Or to chew up our carrots. They weren't allowed on board. We talked with our mouth, mouths full, and nobody said please or thank you. After dinner, I tried to teach the pirates to play soccer. Braidbeard kicked the ball and yelled, Arr, soccer! Arg sucker! the crew yelled. Then everybody dove for the ball at once, and it rolled right off the deck. After it, me hearties! Braidbeard commanded. After it? we all whispered. We fought over who would get the ball, but it didn't matter anyway because a shark came along and swallowed it in one gulp. So much for soccer. By now it was past my bedtime, but nobody tells pirates to go to bed, to take a bath, or to brush their teeth. Maybe that's why their teeth are green. Pirates sleep with one eye open, just in case, and they don't change into pajamas, unless they want to. Pirates don't do anything they don't want to, except for maybe swabbing the decks. I wanted to be a pirate forever. But then I found out what else they don't do. When I couldn't stay awake any longer, I asked Braidbeard to tuck me in and read me a story. Tuck you in, he bellowed. Pirates don't tuck. No tucking, the crew cried. And the only thing they had to read was a map. Don't you have any books, I asked. Braidbeard looked confused. Books? I don't think he even bothered, or I didn't even bother to ask about a good night kiss. It wasn't easy to fall asleep without a story, but I was finally dozing off when a storm broke. Thunder boomed and lightning flashed. I tried to hide under the covers as waves slammed up against the ship, but I kept falling out of my hammock. I couldn't find anyone in the cabin. They were all on deck. Lower the sails, Braidbeard shouted. Batten down the hatches! Everybody ran around yelling and lowering and battening. Nobody had time to sit close to me and tell me it would all be over soon. Nobody even noticed me. I decided that I didn't want to be a pirate after all. Just then, flash, crash, crack, lightning hit and hit the mast and split it right down the middle. The mast is what the big pole that the sails are tied to in the middle of the ship. What'll we do now? One of the pirates asked. We'll have to turn back, called another. But the treasure, hollered Braidbeard. Where will we bury our treasure? I stepped forward. Maybe I can help, I shouted over the wind. I think I know the perfect digging spot. Jeremy Jacobs' backyard. When the storm was over, we rode, we rode back to shore and buried the chest. We drew a map so we could find the treasure again, but I don't think I'll need it because it's right under the tree.
and Jeremy Jacobs backyard. Here's a compass rose that says north, east, southwest. After the pirates repaired the ship and got ready to set sail. Before they left, Braidbeard handed me a flag and said, You make a fine pirate, Jeremy Jacob. Guard that treasure well. We'll be back to get it soon enough. Soon enough, the crew repeated. And if you ever need us, Braidbeard added, just run the Jolly Robert Roger up yonder pole. Up yonder pole, the other shouted. And maybe I will, but not today. The Jolly Roger is the name of this flag. I have soccer practice. And he is on the team pirates. <laughs>